Metro City, a well-known crime capital, has been ruled by violence for years, a fact of which new, newly elected mayor, former street fighter Mike Hager, he's basically going to do what he can to check out this problem, the Mad Gear problem. This game actually took place in the 80s, not 90s. That was a mistake. In the Japanese version, I think it's 89. So here's Mike Hagar. Yeah, the arcade version of Final Fight is superior to the Super Nintendo one. There's a Sega, C ver a Sega CD version that's good, but I think the arcade version is better. The only difference is that for the Sega CD version, the, um, the music is better. I was talking about myself near my school. There was an arcade with Metal Slug 1 or 2, but I ignored it because it was 2D. Oh, Metal Slug 1 and 2 are amazing games, especially Metal Slug X. Metal Slug 3 is really good. Alright. Guys, profile, Master of the Art of Ninjutsu. You do the off the wall jump. Cody is the master of knife. His girlfriend Jessica's been kidnapped. Which version? Um, it's is the arcade version to use. Former champion Street Fighter. He's a professional wrestler. He can do the back drop in the pile driver. Yeah, it's the arcade version to use in the beat em up bundle. So in the beat em up bundle you can play online, whereas here, um, no. But I have the beat em up bundle for like people wanting to play online on that. And there's two games in that collection that are not on here. That's um that's um The King of Dragons. Hey Ted, thank you! Thank you for the 500 bits. The King of Dragons and um Knights of the Round. Knights of the Round is a really good one. I tend to prefer I tend to prefer I tend to prefer Final Fight, but Streets of Rage is really good. I think the best Final Fight game is Final Fight 3 on the Super Nintendo. I used to think the best Streets of Rage is Streets of Rage 2, but now like I think the best Streets of Rage game is Streets of Rage 4. Streets of Rage 4, I I beat that game in one sitting um last summer. And it was well, well worth it. Wouldn't mind playing that again. Um, but I'm thinking about getting it on Steam so I could use Parsec to, to do online four players. Because um, here's the thing about it. Um, it's actually two player online on like on all platforms but if you use parsec then you'll be able to do um you'll be able to do like four players streets of rage 3 in my opinion is the worst game in the series or at least the american version streets of rage 3 in japan what well, they call it bare knuckle 3 because the series in japan is called bare knuckle um, it's alright. It's better than the American release because they made so many changes. But, that said, um, I think in my opinion, um, Streets of Rage 4 is the best game in the series. They nailed it. Hope you're doing well, Ted. The same publisher, um, .emu, um, they're the ones that are publishing, um, they're the ones that are publishing the new Ninja Turtles game, and the developers are the same as, um, the Scott Pilgrim vs. The World, Panzer Paladin. Um, they changed the looks of all the characters, and they took some other, they also changed the story a little bit, and removed, like, a couple of characters.
Yeah, the new Ninja Turtles game is going to be fantastic. Now, that's a sequel. Well, that's a game that's worthy of being a sequel to Turtles in Time. That's something on my wish list I never thought... Like a particular personal wish list I never thought we would ever get in a million years. And here we are. No release dates? It says PC and consoles. But for PC, it's Steam. But I do think eventually it's going to make it to Switch, PS4, and Xbox One. And PS the PS4 and Xbox One versions will most likely be played on PS5 and Xbox Series X, respectively. I'll, all I hope for is if it comes out on Switch, I hope that they make physical copies. But they made physical copies of Streets of Rage 4, so I would assume they'll work out a deal with Nickelodeon to, um, to do it. And that would make me happy if they were to act, ever do that. It's probably going to be a long while. I, I don't think we're going to get it for a while. Oh god, no. Pearls in Time reshelled sucks. I want to see what else we'll get now. I hope that they add voice acting, like they get the original voice actors. But the original voice of Shredder from that era passed away years ago, so I'll have to get somebody to replace him. I accidentally hit the speed up button by mistake. All right, get rid of these guys over here.
But yeah, um, for Final Fight, like, I've always loved playing the arcade version of the game. The Super Nintendo version does not compare at all. It's missing a level, it's missing a playable character, it's one player, and there's a couple other things, but those are the main things that really um, made it inferior to the arcade version, because it was rushed. Just to get it out, like, within, like, months after the Super Nintendo came out in Japan, and they never bothered to fix it in North America. Instead, they decided to make another game altogether, a separate game, Final Fight Guy, which removes Cody and replaces him with Guy. And the worst thing about Final Fight Guy was, um, it was a blockbuster rental exclusive. Eventually, I think they sold it in stores, but it did not sell well. It was actually a super hard to find game. Home version, Sega CD. Back in the 90s, it was Sega CD. People say Street Fighter innovated the having the bonus stage where you destroy a car. Nope, Final Fight's where it came from. Then again, it's from the same team. Street Fighter 2 had the same team as Final Fight. The game over screen is morbid, yeah. I just work with demolishing cars with power tools. I could have used fists like that. That would have been great. I wonder how practical is it in real life to do something like that. I'm kind of a little bit curious on it. This way, open this, like that.
Alright. They're knocked out. Oh, well, not him yet, but he will be. I remember an organization in my uni's university that would charge $5 to go ham on a car. The money would go for other organizations who help suffer, who suffer discrimination. Oof, that's not good. Oh, wait. Who suffer from discrimination? Oh, sorry, I read that wrong. My apologies. Sorry. I'm sorry about that. Why do I keep hitting that button? But yeah, like, I hope that the people that did suffer from discrimination end up in a safe place. I am sorry that I read that wrong. My apologies, Keyblade. Oh god. Yep. That's who he's based He's pretty much who he's based off of. There's also characters in this name Axel and Slash based off of the Guns N' Roses singers. Guns N' Roses mus musicians. I forgot who, who Roxy's based off of, but Poison is based off of the band Poison, at least the name. Yeah, he suffered from giantism and he unfortunately passed away. Because by the time he could have had surgery to to get rid of what was causing him to, to grow and then eventually like weaken his bones, um, it was already at the point where he was already too late and they couldn't actually like help him out. And they helped out um, another wrestler named Paul White who used to be known as the Big Show. Eddie E. E. I. E. I think it's Eddie E. Yeah, he's from the Princess Bride. Yeah, he did some acting in addition to wrestling. You're good. I just didn't know how to describe the overall topic. But long story short, the card was marketed with all marked with all sorts of ism words like racism, sexism, transphobia, etc. We basically paid to beat the heck out of that car. Ah, okay. I understand now. Oh yeah, totally. Bam, ba -dum. Oh yeah, so we're in stage four. We're in some sort of like, like power plant, like, like so not really a power plant, but it's like some sort of a um, factory. Let's try other characters, let's try Cody. Oh. 
Oh, I think I, I know I know where I originally came from because um There was a wrestling interview that he was in and that well not really a wrestling interview, yeah. At a WrestleMania one year and then he actually um put his, his big hands all over somebody who was a lot smaller than he was. I've never really met somebody that was over seven foot personally, but if I did, it would be very intimidating. Well, at least at first, because I wouldn't know like how to react. It could be somebody who's very nice, but I'm worried like, it's one of those things where you don't know like how to, what you do. In regards to first impressions, but and I'm not saying it as a way to sound like um, insulting or condescending or anything. It's just I wouldn't really know what to do. It's more or less the feeling of when you see somebody like super tall, like compared to you. It's like a little bit taller, but that's fine. That's no problem. Bring Hagger out. So the character Mike Hagar is based off a wrestler, um he's based off the wrestler Jesse the Body Ventura. Wait, whoa. I didn't even beat him yet, and it opened. Ah. Well, that teacher is the same height as me. I'm 5'11". And yet, even I, like, feel intimidated by people significantly taller than me. Like, by that, I mean, like, a foot taller or something. But nothing in terms of like um, being afraid of them, just a little intimidated in terms of seeing them at first glance. And then it just goes away afterwards. With the clothesline, the lariat. People always wanted Hagar to be in the same game as, um, as Zangief. Capcom just doesn't want to do it. So the boss here is Rolento, who appears in other Street Fighter games. Just like a previous boss earlier, um, Sodom. And Rolento first appeared in, in, in this, but he, he was also in Street Fighter Alpha 2. And three, as well as um, to Ultra, Ultra Street Fighter Four. He throws a lot of grenades. He's actually a very hard boss. In the hardest difficulty, he's like almost impossible unless like you have a lot of quarters. Bonus stage time. Let's go. There we go, got it. All right, very good. That got me an extra life. There's so many Capcom composers at the time that worked on this, like almost every Capcom composer that was employed by the company, worked on a few tracks. Legendary composer Yoko Shimomura, she worked on two tracks. Um, 
She worked on this particular, I believe she worked on this track and also went the bathroom track and that's coming up. And Mega Man composer Manami Matsume worked on a few tracks. Like everyone that was working for Capcom that was a composer worked on music for this game. But all but one were un were uncredited. And the one that was credited, he goes by the pseudonym Yuki-chan's Papa. I don't know what that's supposed to mean, but then again, everyone had pseudonyms just because of the fact that um, at the time, like Japanese employees were being headhunted by other like Japanese video game companies in hopes to lure them away from one company and have them work for theirs. For example, um, the two creators of Street Fighter 1, after that game was released, or shortly after that game was released, um, they left Capcom because they were headhunted by SNK to, to lure them away from Capcom and have them work for SNK instead, which they went. One of them ended up working on Fatal Fury, which, um, Fatal Fury, which, um, Terry Bogard came from. And the thing about that is that when they were working on Fatal Fury, they had Street Fighter 1 in mind, and what they wanted to do was outdo Street Fighter 1, not knowing that they were, they were thinking that they would, Capcom would never make a Street Fighter 2, and to their surprise, Street Fighter 2 came out months before they finished Fatal Fury 1. And if people ever says that Street Fighter, no, Fatal Fury 1 is a Street Fighter 1 ripoff, it's not, Street Fighter 2 ripoff, it's not. It's Street Fighter 1 ripoff. Funny how Bandai Namco and Nintendo are the only two companies who have who are doing Capcom versus SNK before Capcom is even doing anything of that sort. Because Tekken 7 has Geese, and you can have him, and it also has Akuma as guest. Both of them are guest characters, and yet Smash has um, Ryu and Ken and Terry Bogard. Yuki Chan's papa, um, he did the sound effects for Mega Man 1 while Manami Matsume did the music. He also did the, um, the DuckTales soundtrack on the NES. He left Capcom sometime in the early 90s. I know that Yoko Shimomura left around like 93 after Breath of Fire 1. And she ended up working for Square. Her first game was um, called Live a Live, which was never released here. Go back and play as Guy. But she's best known for Super Mario RPG, the Mario Luigi series, Kingdom Hearts, and many of many others. She did Xenoblade One. Yeah, it was a very unusual name because. That, Cause I always noticed like so many of them worked like while using synonyms and it worked the best because it was rare for them to use like real names at the time. They do it now because the way like they they used to do the whole like trying to lure people away from one company and bring them into your own company. They don't do that anymore. I don't think they can do it anymore. Though, at least in Japan, it seems like in the United States, um, it, it's more, it seems to be common now, because there's a, there's a studio, and Xbox owns a studio called The Initiative, which has a lot of, um, ex-employees from Sony Santa Monica and Naughty Dog, and they worked on Gears 5, and now they're working on the, the new Perfect Dark. I want Nintendo to make a brand new studio, like a brand new Western studio. Like they have one in Texas, which is retro, and they got one in Canada, which is next level. But I would like for them to make a new studio, like probably in the California area. Yeah, there's a new Perfect Dark coming out. Um, 
It's gonna come out for Xbox Series X. No release date. It was announced at the the 2020 Game Awards. Like, so if Nintendo were to make more Western Studios, they'll most likely hire people who used to work for some of the big Western companies and use their expertise to um, use their expertise um, in the new studio. Yeah, they do hire a lot of new talent, whether it's people who are like brand new or people who have come from like different studios. Because for Retro Studios, they've hired people who used to work for, like, Rockstar, working on the Grand Theft Auto games. They've hired people who used to work for, like, Naughty Dog. And a couple of Xbox Studios. So they definitely do what they can to get, um, they get their talent. Yeah, I will still say though that it's going to be a long while before we get Metroid Prime 4. That said, I'm hoping that if the rumors are true that Mercury Steam is working on a new 2D Metroid game for the Switch, which would be amazing if they were as a way to hold people over before the new Metroid comes out, or well, new Metroid Prime 4. Because that's what I would like. Because Mercury Steam worked on the Samus Returns remake on the 3DS. Oh, I'd be okay if we were to get Samus Returns on Switch. I'll be very honest. If they were to bring some 3DS games to the Switch that people missed out on because they came out late into the 3DS's life cycle, I would be more than okay with that. That's what they're doing with Metopia. If they were to give Ever Oasis another shot, that'd be nice. But I heard that um, Metopia is actually worked on by Grezzo, the same team that worked on Ever Oasis, as well as all the most of the Zelda remakes. Yeah, Mercury Steam was known for making the Castlevania one, Castlevania games. I heard the, the weakest output was the second Lords of Shadow. People didn't like that that much. People liked the first one, and people liked Mirror Fate alright. You wanna see the 3DS Zelda games come over to the Switch? Yeah, I would like that too. Like, I wouldn't mind if they would have bring a lot of like their 3DS output. It's like, because people are saying like they're almost done bringing their Wii U output and people are thinking now they're going to start bringing their 3DS games. But I don't think they're going to bring all of their 3DS games. They're probably going to bring certain ones. Metopia did okay on the 3DS, but nowhere near were what they wanted. So it's getting another chance. It's good to do better on Switch. I just don't know how much better. I never got it on 3DS, but I will definitely get Metopia on Switch day one. I will, I'll pick it up because it seems like it's going to be a neat RPG. What titles would I like to see ported from 3DS to Switch? Kid Icarus Uprising. That's the big one. Um, Kirby's Extra Epic Yarn and Poochie Yoshi's Woolly World? Hmm. What I want, um, in addition to Kid Icarus Uprising, I want, um, let's see, 3DS, 3DS. There's way too many. Well, I wanted Super Mario 3D Land because I feel like 3D Land is like overshadowed by so many other games. Like a Super Mario 3D Mario. 
Like, I know 3D Land may have been a safe game to some, but I still liked it. I still had fun with it. Yeah, like, because that's the thing. A lot of the control, people had mixed opinions with the controls. I didn't mind the controls, but there are people who didn't like it. Yeah, I heard that a lot of people who were left-handed were, like, not a fan of the game's controls at all. Let's see, let me think of some other 3DS games. Um, let's see. Probably, um, I mean, it's probably the Professor Layton games, but they should also do the DS ones as well. Like the entire Professor Layton series. And also, Phoenix Wright 4, 5, and 6. Though Phoenix Wright 4 was um, the Apollo Justice, and that was on DS originally. But then they remade it for 3DS. There's actually a there's actually a um a save yokai watch campaign going on on Twitter. Cause it, because um Yokai Watch has not been doing well in the West at all. Like each game actually been selling um worse and worse outside of Japan. To the point where Yokai Watch 4 might not even release here at all. So people are trying to trying to get um, more awareness to Yokai Watch. Me personally, not my cup of tea. Not really a big Yokai Watch guy. I tried the first one out um, at Near Conicon because that was the last time Nintendo was there. They skipped 2014, but they only came back in 2015 just to promote Yokai Watch. All because. Disney XD was promoting it because that was the channel that it was airing, as well as Hasbro, who was doing all the toys in North America, like handling all the toys. So, what happened is that I tried it. They were pushing it because they really wanted people to play the game. And it's just not for me. You thought Yokai Watch was over? They made a fourth one for the Switch, but it's most likely not coming out here. And because Nintendo published them, but they were not selling well. And they kept selling worse and worse each game. And there's like not many people were interested. Which I've heard that the second game was better. Because I've heard the first game was kind of a drag to get through. And and I could see why. Like I didn't really enjoy it. By the time the second one came out, um, I just didn't really have any interest. Man, some these character sprites feel so stiffened up upright. Yeah. Yeah, because they were trying to go for like bigger graphics because this game was able to handle like so much. And there's more enemies that would pop up if um a second player was playing. With no slowdown too. Because Capcom had some pretty powerful um arcade units at the time. Like every time they made a new arcade unit, like it was always state of the art. They would always do what they can to be better than the competition. But they were also like using the arcades as a way to experiment to see what worked and what didn't work. And this game was a huge hit. Like Capcom was like making some money, but they were losing some money, and this was a huge hit for them. So much so that. They were gonna 
The team that made this game were given a choice to either make a direct sequel or make Street Fighter 2. And they opted to make Street Fighter 2, which ended up being like um one of the biggest arcade games, one of the biggest games of the 90s. The anime also failed because it was more of a gross side of weird humor than anything based on the games. Yeah. Hey Draco. But yeah. I've been thinking to myself, if I were to actually get off the ground and doing like um, gaming what ifs, one of the biggest what ifs I could think of is what if Street Fighter 2 flopped? That's a big one right there. What if Street Fighter 2 flopped? And yeah, we'll like a Detective Pikachu port, but there's a rumor that there, there's gonna be a Detective Pikachu 2 for the Switch. They should just do that. Um, if they're gonna release Detective Pikachu 2 for the Switch, release Detective Pikachu 1, like a, a HD port, at a budgeted price. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, arcade machines um, in pizza places or, like, a local deli or whatever, they would they would have to pick and choose which arcade games. Like, what a local deli I would used to go to or a local pizza place, they would always have a game that stays there for about a month. Like, some games don't even last a week, but some games last a month. And then they rotate them with different games. Sometimes they'll have, like, two or three games. It depends on the space. But they try But there was one time they had to get rid of arcade games like around like 98 because people were just loitering and not even buying any anything there. But the arcade machines were mainly for people who um either are waiting to get their pizza or already finished eating and they want something to do before they go home or whatever. Or whatever it is they're gonna do. Me personally, like, um, like one arcade I would go to, because the most popular games will always be the fighting games. Like any fighting game would pop up. Mostly the Capcom ones or like Tekken, Mortal Kombat, and all that. Knock these guys out. Knock them out. Throwing knives. We got plenty of knives on the floor. Here, you can have your knife back. Final boss time. We're getting there. I was hoping it would be food, but they gave me knives. The final boss is coming up. Here was rare to see arcade machines unless it was the decade arcade. One place I remember only had Sega Rally Cabinet for six years. Mm. Yeah, um, because I remember like growing up, we had like so many great arcade machines. Um, different areas. There was a comic book store that would always have different fighting games. They would always rotate the fighting games, but keeping, but keeping um, other ones. Yeah, I've noticed arcade stores die out sometime in the the early the mid 2000s. Like I'd say the mid 2000s was when they started to die out. Some of the some of the big places that people that were best known for arcades were closing, or they were or they would take the arcades away and, and turn it to something completely different. Yeah, those were rise. Those were rise. Whereas the arcades that people loved, where you play like um, 
shooters, beat em ups, fighting games, um, and other and other types of games that they had to offer, they would go away. Because you would most now it's like if you want those retro arcade games, you go to Barcade. But it, but but the thing is, for Barcade, you have to be twenty one. This is a bar. You can't bring anybody under twenty one with you. Because they because they always check your card. And then there's also like because back in twenty eleven, like this year actually marked yeah because ten because this year marks ten years since um. The Chinatown Fair arcade that I used to go to a lot closed, and then it reopened, I believe, in 2012. But it ended up being like um, a Dave and Buster's Light. Oh yeah, there was a second place in London. Yeah, exactly, Justin. I do remember those. Like, they still do that. There was like a Tomb Raider arcade game that was like a cover shooter. They did the same thing for a Halo arcade game. I should have picked Cody for this because Cody um, can punch those. Cody is the only one who could punch the arrows. Yeah. And it's gotten to a point where, like, um, WB and Netherrealm made, like, a Mortal Kombat arcade game based on Mortal Kombat X, which, um, which was more or less, like, um, a swipe to, swipe to fight. Because they used a mobile game and just turn it into an arcade game, pass it up as that. What we call arcades here with just like two cabins and some pinball machines. <laughs> and final boss beaten. Yes. You win. There we go. Oh, father. I was so scared. I'm so glad to see they didn't hurt you. I'm so sorry, Jessica. I thought I lost you, like I lost your mother. I'll never let anything bad happen to you again. I love you, father. And that's Final Fight. One of the legendary beat-em-ups. Then Final Fight 2 happened, which does not have Guy or Cody, but you have Guy's um, girlfriend at the time. Well, no. No, Guy's girlfriend's sister, um, and one of Hagar's friends. The third game had Guy, but had two new characters, Lucy and Dean. Lucy would end up being in Street Fighter V, as well as Abigail, who was one of the bosses in this game. The boss in the fifth level. But wait, the credits may be over, but there's still more. Cody! That guy just stopped them so that he can go and talk to his girlfriend. Where are you going? How can you just walk away now? I want to stay here with you, Jessica, but I can't. Not while evil stalks the, still stalks the streets. Oh, Cody. It's funny how Cody says that, and yet, um, it's funny how Cody says that, um, and then, like, in the Alpha series, he is, a, starting in Street Fighter Alpha 3, where he makes the Street Fighter debut in that, he's actually, um, a criminal, and he's still a criminal in Street Fighter 4, but he becomes the mayor of Metro City by Street Fighter 5. 